It's Wednesday, which means I'm going to be doing a Windows video. I'm doing my videos. Monday's going to be beginners. Wednesday's going to be Windows. Friday's going to be advanced. Uh, typically, I skew towards more Linux product, but at the same time, I want to go ahead and tie in a weekly Windows video just so everyone kind of gets used to that transition from Windows to Linux because that's where I really see the future. But in this video, I'm going to be covering CD keys for Windows because I see it in the comments all the time. Hey, Titus, just use this shady CD key website and activate your Windows uh, product. And I'm like, no, don't do that. Uh, you're killing me. But when it comes to this, there's a lot of different ways to activate Windows and not all product keys have been created equal. So I wanted to explain and break down the three types of product keys, which will be KMS, MAK, and then traditional product keys. So with this, you should have a lot better understanding of how activations work in Windows, how things can be activated and deactivated, and how a lot of these shady CD key websites get away with selling their keys at like 10% of the actual sticker price. So uh, this is kind of one of those fun things. And I've honestly gotten contacted by probably no less than a dozen of these sites to have sponsored for this video. But I don't do sponsors from shady CD key websites because you shouldn't be using them. And I'm going to tell you why in this video. This video is brought to you by CDN77, the content delivery network used by space agencies and CentOS. I also am using this on ChrisTitus.com to speed up my website. So if you're interested in this, Click the link in the description. So let's jump into this very first right out of the bat. Let's cover your normal product key and how that works in Windows 10. Let's say you go ahead and shell out $200 for a Windows 10 Pro. And this product key comes to you. You activate it on a certain piece of hardware. It is then assigned to that hardware, which is kind of cool. And it kind of sucks at the same time. What's cool about it is, well, you don't need that product key anymore because you can literally just reinstall Windows 10 a whole bunch on that same machine. And it just knows, hey, this hardware has already been assigned a product key and it auto activates. So that's kind of a neat feature of Windows 10, but it also kind of stinks because you can't really transfer that to another PC easily. Now, I, I believe there is a transfer method for a retail, retail purchased C CD keys, but if you had a CD key that came with your actual Windows 10 that you bought in the store, this is called an OEM license. These are non-transferable, which means that's only good for that piece of hardware and you can't transfer that to a new computer you buy, you'd have to rebuy Windows 10. So this is your standard single use product key and you can get these pretty much everywhere. Uh, but a lot of people don't understand the difference between it and what's called MAK keys, which is multiple activation keys. Now, most of these shady CD key websites get a hold of these MAK keys, and usually these come from what's called volume licensing agreements from big companies. So let's say you have a disgruntled IT person that has access to these keys. A lot of times they'll sell them at a pretty big discount to these shady websites, and those shady websites will just distribute them because there's a ton of activations left on these and it'll work for quite a long time. But what ends up happening for those uh, shady CD key websites, you'll be good for a year or two. And then all of a sudden they will just not work anymore or they'll become non-genuine keys because Microsoft blacklisted them. And that's mainly because that volume license agreement from that company, they ran out of keys and they're like, oh crap. We need to do something here. And what they end up doing is changing all their product keys and that old key becomes obsolete and no longer needed. So that's the shady CD keys in a nutshell. They use MAKs, which is multiple, multiple activation keys that is basically hardware agnostic. They don't get pinned down to a specific piece of hardware very important to know and why I don't recommend using these CD key websites because it's really only good for a year or two and then they just dry up. And then finally, there's the KMS keys. Now, 
this is kind of a touchy subject. One, I really can't go into a whole lot of detail on stream or on a video because, well, a lot of it is used for piracy. And this is bad, but I wanted to go over how this works. KMSs are key management servers I, I, or services. What One of the two. I, I'm not sure on the acronym there. I just abused the hell out of KMS because usually when you're at a big company, they have what's called a KMS server. And this server controls all your licensing. And that server communicates with Microsoft in an ideal world. And it says, hey, this is a valid product key and activates and does all this. Now, the cool thing about KMS is, well, when you activate through it, it says, hey, yes, you, you have a valid license, but it's only good for 180 days. That computer needs to check back into that KMS server in that 180 day period of times, and then it like releases that license. So pretty awesome. But if that KMS key gets activated and then that server disappears, well, in 188 days time, it'll deactivate that Windows uh, install, whether that's server, whether it's 10, whatever it might be. That's how KMS works in a nutshell. Now, I bring up piracy on this because a lot of times uh, they have fake KMS servers that are emulated and activate certain versions, and then it's just a service that runs in the background. Um, these can be tricky because obviously when you get piracy involved, a lot of times you get viruses, you get malware, you get a lot of things that can cause some shenanigans and problems with your system. So running a KMS service that... Uh, emulates these official activation servers, well, sometimes you can be used for malicious purposes by utilizing this. Now, I know there's going to be people in the comments that say, oh, no, no, KMS servers are fine, uh, especially these unauthorized piracy versions. Um, while I'll disagree with that, I definitely will say uh, that's far better than utilizing a completely pirated or modified system ISO. So some people go the extreme and go with these pre-activated ISOs. They download off the internet. And these are the ones I say don't ever, 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 ever do because the pre-activated ones typically are modified system files and system modules, and they can embed all kinds of shenanigans in there that aren't going to be shown up by any antivirus uh, because it is embedded in the system. And they say, hey, you need to do a check-in with this server every single day or every time you hop online, and then they can use your computer uh, against your will using these pirated OS with pre-activated. So don't ever use those. I wanted to go over really the touch on piracy a little bit on this video just because I'm against it, but at the same time, I wanted to explain the two types of piracy along with the actual keys because using pre-activated ISOs are totally, totally bad. And then KMS is a touchy subject. That's, uh, I would never condone doing it, but it, it's far better, uh, far less risky, I should say, than one that with the actual modified system. So it, obviously don't ever pirate uh, Windows, but if you do, there you go. That's, that's the ways that you want to go about doing it, at least in, in a semi, I, would, I don't even want to say the word safe because it's not safe anytime uh, piracy is involved. But those are really the activation methods that's behind Windows. I personally like MAK the best because multiple activation keys is nice with the volume licensing agreement, obviously, if you're with a company. But for the average user behind here, please know a lot of times when you go to shady websites with cheap CD keys, eh, you're going to get that MAK license that will eventually run out and it'll become non-genuine. Now, that said, there are ways to get discount keys on the initial single-use ones, which are awesome. Uh, I usually go through Amazon on these, and if it's an official Amazon or a Microsoft partner that is selling these through Amazon, usually these are safe. They are single-use, and I have used these a bunch because a lot of times you can get probably about a 50% discount in some instances. So it, it depends on where you're going uh, for these keys. I just wanted to touch base so everyone understands a little bit better when it comes to activating Windows and server and all the Microsoft products out there. These product keys can get very confusing and know that uh, using just these cheap $5, $10 keys may work in the interim, but they will not work forever because they're not legit.
But with all that said, let me know your thoughts down in the comments section below. And a big shout out to all my patrons. Without you, I couldn't make videos like this one. And I'll see you in the next one.